Hello everybody, my name is István Lovák, the leader of Fabric Academy. I would like to introduce a brand new webinar series presenting in-demand features and know-how that we use in Brick Visual. Each webinar will explore an industry-specific topic in depth, featuring tips and tricks, practical guidance and theory. The first pre-recorded webinar will present the entire drafting process from start to finish, led by our expert, Ricardo Rovoletto. Within this free session, you will learn how to create a super engaging draft and take your work to the next level. This webinar has a relevant connection to our post production in our quiz masterclass, where you can learn what you see now. Hello everybody, my name is Ricardo and welcome to this drafting webinar. It has a very strong connection with our post-production masterclass here in Brick, which will start the 22nd of March, so hurry up and book your place. Drafting is a very important phase during the realization process of an image. It's usually the very first sketchy concept that we deliver to our client and that we use to communicate to our client what's our main idea and uh, the main concept behind uh, an image that we are going to create. And for this reason, a draft must be, as I said, sketchy, but at the same time very clear and very efficient in uh, communicating whether it's a um, specific light condition or a specific mood or a specific story that we are going to use to characterize that specific picture. And uh, it's very important uh, that we are fast in doing them because um, we are usually uh, going to do pretty a lot of drafts in uh, the very first days when we first approach a new project because it's a good tool to experiment uh, around the different views and around the different angles of the project and to uh, create specific light and moods for each one of them in a sketchy, but uh, as I said, also very efficient way. Okay, so let's jump into it and let me uh, show you how we approach the first steps of uh, draft creation. So, as you see here, we have our Max file open and uh, let me just quickly guide you through uh, this project. This is a, um, a school, I think uh, in Norway or in any case in some Nordic country, for which we already made some pictures. Uh, maybe you already seen them on our website. Uh, I can also show them to you now. So as you see, the geometry is the same. And uh, as you already uh, might notice from these pictures, the uh, main topic of this building was, uh, of course, um, being suitable for, for kids and being connected to the nature which is a very common characteristic when we are uh, working for uh, a Norwegian client, especially. So let me quickly guide you through uh, the base geometry that we have. This is our project. And so now what we want to do is, first of all, to find a good camera angle that uh, we would like to, to use to show something specific about the project. So I would like not to repeat uh, what we already did uh, with our pictures. So maybe together we can look for something interesting. So uh, my first tip is, as we already said, to study the geometry, study the project and to uh, figure out uh, what is uh, uh, special about it, what is making this project, this geometry particular compared to others. What's let's say the, the core of this project. One of the cool features that I think it's worth to emphasize is the existence uh, of these uh, spaces basically below the roof and uh, we can treat them as community spaces or in any case, uh, since we are in a uh, Nordic country, maybe even protection from rain when the kids are playing outside. So maybe, for example, this feature can be uh, something interesting that we want to emphasize with a, with a camera. So I will first 
maybe move around here to search for a nice angle that you can use. So right now, as you see, I'm using a pretty small focal length because as, as you see, the distortion lines are uh, pretty much emphasized. Uh, but in this case, I think we can keep it like this because we might wanna really show much more about this uh, roof structure and the space behind it. So, and uh, sorry, and the space uh, under it. So we can keep it like this and maybe we can try to go for a camera like this. Mm, I would like also to show you something uh, pretty cool and unique that we are using here at Brick Visual which is our scene manager. The scene manager is a tool made uh, here in Brick that allow us to um, control our scene, meaning uh, our cameras, our light, whether it's a sun or an HDRI, and the render settings and the size of the picture, considering uh, the aspect ratio that we wanna use for it, and creating multiple options for it uh, without uh, having to waste too much time in turning on and off sun, without uh, maybe losing track of uh, which camera had which specific aspect ratio. And it's a very, very interesting tool, especially in this first phase uh, where we, you will probably end up for sure having uh, tons and tons of different cameras and also different uh, light mm, solutions. And for this reason, Scene Manager can be a very efficient tool. So in this case, for example, I have my camera here. And what I want to do is uh, to create a new scene. Actually, let's delete this one. So what I do is uh, creating a new scene. And from this panel, I select my camera, which is in this case test camera. And uh, if you see already from here, I can set the resolution of my viewport, which right now is one. If I set it to 1.5, you see that the view is automatically adjusting and uh, we don't need to open the render settings to do it. And we can just quickly test the aspect ratio that is most suitable for us for this kind of cameras. In this case, I would maybe not use uh, something uh, would not, I would not go for a landscape or maybe maximum something like this so we can uh, keep the emphasis on our roof and uh, we can keep looking for a nice angle for it. Another very important thing that you want to do, especially in this early phase, is to look for some cool uh, reference. References um, are a very important tool, especially as we already said in the first phase of the um, image creation process, because they are helping the artist uh, to have uh, a better idea in terms of uh, mood, in terms of um, light situation, especially in terms of colors, because uh, one of the uh, most important things and also one of the most hard things to do is to have a realistic uh, color setup and uh, references are very important for this reason especially if uh, and this is something that uh, usually we encourage people to do if you find uh, photos as the references is not very nice and not very useful for you especially to use renders as references because it has already some color manipulation and already some unrealistic uh, um, approach to it that might mislead you from the right color setup. So, uh, but they can also be good for a specific atmosphere. So for example, in this case, um, talking about atmosphere and talking about the fact that uh, we uh, want to emphasize also this feeling of uh, having this roof structure um, used uh, as a cover, of course. Uh, we can pretend that this light setup, so this feeling of uh, uh, sun starting slowly to come out after the rain, uh, can be very interesting and also for this reason, uh, for example, also something like this, which is, as we said, uh, it's not nice because it's a render but at the same time it can help us to understand the feeling that we uh, want to have and that we want to communicate with our picture. So using these references we already can have a nice idea about the colors that we want to use 
And uh, let's start then to find uh, uh, from the camera a nice light setup uh, that uh, uh, we want to use to achieve this goal. So um, let me start to do some render tests and see how it goes. As you see, we already have a, a sun position in this scene, uh, which is already uh, basically coming in our direction. And this is an effect that we want to have if we want to follow this kind of, uh, of reference. So you see that in here, this uh, uh, very strong, uh, hazy feeling uh, uh, given by the humidity in the air and also the light cached uh, from the uh, small raindrops uh, are possible only because the sun is coming in our faces. So it's coming to our direction. And we want to uh, try to replicate uh, this feeling also in our, in our draft, of course, using uh, the right light setup. So that's why this might be already something interesting for us. Let's start a render to see how it goes. So as you see here, we just started our rendering with the IPR system. So we are able to move around with the sun to look for a light uh, direction and light condition that is most suitable for us. And as you see, as we already discussed, uh, we are trying to have uh, the feeling of a backlit scenario where the light is coming in our direction. And um, this will allow us to emphasize the feeling of aerial perspective inside the scene. So most probably something like this will work for us and also consider uh, one, uh, let's say, composition thing that uh, when you set up the light, it's very important to know that the um, attention should uh, um, go in the brightest point of the picture. This means that uh, usually uh, when you set up the sun direction, you want to make sure that you have uh, a darker foreground that leads the eye to a brighter spot where usually the main thing is happening. So for example, in this picture, I could already assume that in this part of the image, where, as we already said, is very bright, and it's almost in the middle of the picture, you see, we can have the presence, for example, of a character or something. So it's very important that uh, I make sure that the bright part of my image is around here. I don't want to have a light condition where I have, for example, everything in shadow here and then a very bright point here because this would force my eye to go into that point, which is the brightest point, but at the same time it would be at the side of the picture. And this doesn't make any sense because we want to use the composition to bring the eye inside the picture and not outside the picture. So this is why, for uh, these reasons, I think that uh, this uh, light setup with this camera uh, might do well for us. So. When we are okay with it, we can maybe start a, a, a quick render and um, save our render elements. Talking about render elements, some uh, of you might already know uh, what are these things, but mainly what we are going to use, uh, especially in this case, are the Z-Depth, which is a render element that is giving us the information of, let's say, distance from uh, our position or a specified point in the scene and uh, what's far in the in the scene and the further it gets the brighter the brighter it will be and um, if you already see how this uh, render element is done uh, and how it looks like uh, you already have probably the feeling that we are going to use this to create our uh, aerial perspective feeling in the scene and uh, another important render element is the wire color that allows us to uh, select specific elements inside our picture and uh, mm, fine tune them in terms of uh, color or brightness and uh, to eventually mat the paint on top of them, making sure that uh, we have an accurate selection mask for them.
Now that we are happy with it, I would say that uh, we can uh, maybe create a bigger resolution version of this picture. I can actually, for now, just uh, maximize the size of the viewport. And now we see that it's already actually the size that we need. So I can just stop the interactive and I can just save out these render elements. For drafting, uh, you really don't need to have a, a very high quality picture as a base because as we already said, uh, we're gonna use it only for um, giving the client the idea of the light and of the mood that we wanna have. So we really don't need uh, to be super specific already in this first phase. So for me, this base render is already more than uh, enough to start a draft. So here we are. So as we said, we just saved out our render elements. And uh, as you see here, we already imported them in our Photoshop. And this is the basic layer structure that we use here in Brick. And of course, we wanted already to import the references that we are going to use into the Photoshop file. This is very important because uh, you always want to uh, have them um, under your eyes to see uh, what's good and what's not good uh, uh, in, your, in your picture compared to your reference. First thing that we see, let's keep this as our official reference. And let's see that, um, as we already said here, we have to analyze the, uh, the light and the color condition. So when we look at this reference, what do we see? We see, first of all, that it's a pretty uh, contrasted picture because it has some pretty um, intense dark spots and pretty intense bright spots. And everything is characterized by a strong presence of aerial perspective inside. So these are already these two aspects uh, that I would like to focus on. So the contrast and the presence of the aerial perspective. And then also actually the overall warm tone of the picture, because if you compare our image, our raw render with our reference, you would uh, probably see already that uh, our image is pretty much uh, rich of blue tonalities. This is of course because of the sky and because we don't have already our uh, warm aerial perspective in the scene and um, while in, the, in our reference uh, there is a strong presence of warm tonalities in two. So the color, the contrast and the feeling of aerial perspective inside are the three topics that uh, first we want to work on uh, while uh, uh, starting our post-production. So first thing, I would just increase a tiny bit the contrast in our picture. Uh, I used to do it by levels, uh, but doesn't mean that you cannot do it with uh, curves or with brightness contrast or with exposure control, and it's completely up to you. And actually, as you already see, this is very important, you see that uh, when I'm starting to tweak the contrast, in this case I'm working on the dark values, you see that also the colors are changing. This, we can uh, prevent this thing from happening, but it's also cool to let it be because you already see um, that the contrast uh, is affecting also the tonalities of the picture, which is uh, helping us to lead our picture in the direction of, 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 our, of our reference image. So first thing first, I start to uh, fine tune the, uh, the brightness contrast and I start to work in order to uh, eliminate these cold tones um, and to emphasize the uh, warm tonalities in it. So first thing is usually what I do is uh, with a use saturation, uh, you can, with this tool, you can pick the tonality that you wanna tweak. So in this case, if I click here, if you see it's immediately going in the science, or if I click here in the, in the blues, but in both cases, the, the cold tonalities, and I try to re reduce them both in the case of the blues and in the case of the science. Uh, there are several ways to do it. Uh, there is also, I mean, you can of course help you with the color balance and you can just increase a little bit uh, the warm tonalities, so the reds and the yellows in order to get a bit closer to this. And if you see already from when we start, from here, 
until here, you see that we are slowly, slowly trying to lead ourselves into this di direction and we are slowly getting there. The second thing now is uh, giving this effect of uh, hazy and rainy mood with the aerial perspective. So right now, I'm gonna use this render element that I just converted to a smart object, I will tell you later why, um, which is the Z-Depth. As we already specified earlier, the Z-Depth is a tool that uh, is allowing us to give the sense of distance and in this specific case, to simulate the existence of a haze of aerial perspective without, uh, uh, without uh, like rendering it. So to use it, there are uh, several methods. The one that we are gonna use now is uh, simply putting it into a, a group and uh, using the screen blending mode. By doing this, if you see what happened, is that we are using the bright values of the Z-Depth to kind of wash out some specific parts of the picture and these parts of the pictures are the parts that are more, that are further from us. And this is exactly what we want to have to emphasize the feeling of uh, aerial perspective in the scene. By adding also, for example, in this case, levels, we can also tweak it in order to make it a bit, a bit uh, you know, darker in the foreground, because we still want to keep our foreground a bit dark and contrasty. And we can also pretend that it's getting a bit brighter when it's going further from us. Of course, I would say that to emphasize the depth of the picture, we need also to add some more elements inside the scene. So right now, if you see, we have just this big foreground here. We have the background here, which is uh, uh, the back part of the building. But we absolutely need uh, some other elements, in this case, some trees to have the feeling that there is something even further or even a tiny bit closer between this point and this point that will help us to uh, create a more sense of depth in our picture. And this is what we are going to do now. So using some more matte elements inside the scene to create depth. As we were saying now, uh, we want to start to introduce some matte painting elements inside the scene to help us in the composition and to achieve this depth feeling that we were discussing about. So uh, the first thing that I suggest you before merging the matte painting elements into the scene is to uh, make, a, let's say, a quick sketch, uh, even with a, with a simple brush, it doesn't matter which brush you, you want to use, just the one that you feel more comfortable with to uh, decide uh, mm, which, and which elements you want to use, let's say the shape, and uh, where you want to put these elements. First thing that we see is that we clearly need to somehow cover this, uh, this background uh, with uh, something that might be trees. So as we said, we want to uh, try to emphasize the connection with nature into this project. So um, for sure here that we will need the presence of some trees and even you can pretend to um, sketch also the, the tonality and the feeling of depth that these elements should have already. So which ones are darker, which ones are a bit brighter and so on. And basically uh, like this, for example, in this case, I would say that we can even maybe try to um, to say, what if we use a, a pretty strong uh, dark element here in the foreground to uh, help us give a bit more depth in order to somehow recall what we see here in our reference. So you see that we have this overall brightness with this very strong and contrasty dark spots in the foreground. And with this light situation, it makes much sense to try to have a similar feeling. So in the foreground, having a sort of uh, dark element that can be at the, the trunk of a, of a big tree, like in, like in this case, with this shape, it can be something interesting uh, to have a, a bit more the feeling of, of depth. And we can have maybe another similar element, let me close the reference, another similar element, uh, let's say here, to uh, recall it and to give a bit of depth as well to the picture while maintaining 
also the contrasty tonalities that we were discussing about. But this is stuff that we have to see a bit more precisely with the matte painted elements itself, but just for us to decide more or less the position and the kind of element that we want to use. Um, as you see here, I did one thing, I flipped my picture, I set it up a, a shortcut for this, and especially when working on the composition, flipping the picture can be something, uh, let's say, pretty helpful because it's uh, helping us to somehow refresh our eyes from the composition that we already know and that we've already seen, and to check uh, possible mistakes or things that we can improve in our composition. So yeah, let's say that maybe, I don't know, we, we can try to have another element here. I'm also always talking about trees here in this part behind in order to uh, give a bit more depth as well here. And let's say that we can pretend to keep this as a base structure for our composition and for the positioning of our matte elements. So um, let's now start to merge some elements into the scene. What I want to do is probably in this case uh, uh, try to use some uh, pine tree or in any case tree that is helping me to give the feeling of a uh, situation regarding a uh, Norwegian or in any case a Nordic scenario. And let's see what happens. For example, I don't know, I see that this element can be interesting. Can be also one very important thing. Uh, it's the, almost the primary thing when talking about matte painting is um, to carefully check the light direction of the picture that we want to use for matte painting. So in this case, what I also like about this element is that the light on this pine tree is basically, actually, I maybe need to flip it, but uh, the, the feeling of having a sort of a backlit element already uh, without having me to tweak too much the light with uh, <coughs> curves or with levels, it's very important uh, to make it uh, uh, fit the entire scene. So when you're looking for the matte elements that you want to use, remember always to uh, find uh, an element that uh, requires uh, the minor uh, amount of adjustments in Photoshop as possible. And this will help you and will help us, is always helping us to achieve and to maximize the feeling of realism in our scene. So for example, this tree, I can pretend to say, what happens if I use this as a foreground element, for example, in this part of the composition. Maybe scaling down a little bit, maybe I want to also make some leaves visible. Let's see. And I want to, now that I see that the light direction is cool, I just want to use a bit of corrections to make it darker and to make it fit our light situation. Or maybe it's a bit too dark. And I want to also make it a bit, tiny bit more yellowish, like the scene is. And for quickly sketching, we can pretend to use maybe even the same element into another position of the scene. Also because here we see only the trunk and maybe we, for example, if we delete some of these elements that are a bit characterizing this tree, we can pretend that we really use the same without uh, making it recognizable somehow. So that's also a possibility, especially when sketching. So we go here. Maybe start to put this element here. And 
And once again, we probably want to contrast it a bit more. And in this case, the light feeling is a bit more emphasized. If you see in this part, we really see that the light is exactly the one that we want to have in this scene. And this is really helping us uh, with the composition and with the depth feeling. Let's try maybe now uh, before adding some more elements to see what happens if we cover a bit the background here. So let me look for elements that we can use for this purpose and with the proper light direction. Let's try to use maybe this element. So in this case, you see, I'm just looking for a series of trees that I can use as background. I want to first of all put them below, of course, my other elements because they should cover them. And especially, I want to mask them only in the background. So what I want to do is to probably use as mask the alpha channel. So it's this element is the element that is defining basically our background and using it as a mask for this element I can already mask it in order to be only part of the background and right now of course it doesn't have any adjustment regarding uh, uh, let's say the feeling of depth and of haze that we already uh, gave with the with the z-depth but uh, this is something that uh, we will do uh, now by adjusting it so for example i already see that it's a bit too dark probably especially compared the building here so i can just use the levels to wash it out a bit i can just warm it up a bit with the color balance and in this case for example, maybe I can pretend to reduce a little bit the Z depth there that we already used. Maybe keeping it like this, but then try to make it even more fade out somehow. Yeah, and this is helping us to define a bit more what's happening in the background. So right now, another thing that we can take care of uh, before adding even more elements into the composition is taking care of what's happening in the ground and trying to ready to matte paint some uh, grass and some natural elements uh, in the ground in our picture. And then let's continue to merge some elements into the scene to create a bit more uh, depth on this composition. As we see in here, now maybe it's good for me to create a mask that will help me to uh, hide the, build the, the trees behind the building. So here, for example, the wire color element will be pretty useful because it's helping me to quickly select the building. add this to the selection okay one two three it's almost perfect yeah let's say that we are okay with it and now let's use this selection to create a mask of course black mask that will hide these trees behind the building so also in this case this tree has a light that is pretty much what we need for this image, for this composition. And this is very important, as we already mentioned. Let's try to find some other element from our collection that is fitting what we need to do in this picture. Let's see what we can do. Let's merge a bit more elements and then let's see how many actually we need and where to use them without uh, being too worried now about 
the process in this phase. Let's see something like this as well. And of course, these are all elements that we will uh, tweak later to make them fit uh, the aerial perspective feeling that we were discussing about before. So we don't have to worry too much about this now. Let's see something else. Because mm -hmm. we, uh, we really, I think that we really need to put much more trees and natural elements into the scene because from the point when we are standing to the background, uh, we, I want to give to this picture the feeling that we are really inside the nature a bit more, that this building, as we said, is integrated in nature much more. Something like this to have maybe some kind of autumn tree to have also the presence of a bit warm colors. Let's see what happens. Well, maybe. Maybe it's not perfectly fitting our Nordic feeling, but at the same time, I think for now, composition-wise, it's something that we can comfortably use to cover a bit of the background. I want to put these guys in the back area. Let's copy one to the side, actually, it doesn't matter because we will never see that it's the same. You see here, I am starting to ignore a bit the light factor in the elements because they start to be not that visible anymore in the background and they will be pretty much washed out by the aerial perspective in the end, so we really don't want to be uh, too worried about this factor now. So I think that now in terms of quantity of elements is what we need to have. So let's start fine-tuning them uh, with the color palette that we want to use. So I would suggest you to start very simply one by one. So we turn off the elements, especially the ones in the background, and let's start from the ones more in the foreground that we see, for example, this tree. So we already see that it has a bit too much of uh, yellow tint, uh, sorry, <clears throat> of green tint. So what we wanna do is, as we already said, using the use saturation and actually acting, uh, I think, on the yellows because even though here we see green, actually what happens, you see, it's a, uh, if I pick in some spots, in the darkest spots, in the darkest spots, excuse me, uh, I have the greens, but if we pick here, I have the yellows. So let's try first to act on the yellows and see what happens. So to make them a bit warmer, yeah, that's exactly what we want. And maybe at this point, uh, let's also use the greens. Yeah, they are very present into this, so I just want to make them much warmer. Yeah, and this is more or less what we want to see that now it starts to look a bit more like these trees, like the others. And probably let's make it a bit, tiny bit more washed out compared to the other to make it pop out. I mean, to make this foreground tree pop out more, especially compared also to the roof here. And let's proceed with the next one. For example, this one has already more or less the tonalities that we need. If you see, it's a bit warmer, but we need to wash it out a bit more to make it maybe a bit less bright, a bit darker and a bit washed out, like this. So we're starting to create a, a jerky of elements. Uh, let's... Hmm. Let's go with these. So these ones, hmm, we want them to be for sure a bit less reddish because they are too red now. 
want it to be like that, a bit more like this. And here the light is not exactly what we, it's not perfect because it's coming pretty much from the side with these trees. So, but we can always play with it by making them a bit darker so that we have a, not such a precise feeling of the light direction, even though it's still there a little bit but we just want to contrast them more in order to make it almost disappear and maybe give them a bit more of yellowish tint just a tiny bit okay and then proceeding with this element here we just want to probably making make it a bit darker and washed out So you see how I am able to create depth from these trees and this wall of our building. This is very important. And the same with these trees. So we want to proceed like this. This is a very far background tree, so it will be much more washed out than the others. Same goes with this tree, same story. Okay, put it here. And here, of course, we wanted to go with an autumn tree, so it's really yellowish. Actually, maybe we can keep the tonalities and simply wash them out a bit more. It's cool to have a bit of differentiation in the tones here. It makes it even a bit more realistic because trees are never all of the exact same color. We can pretend to have a bit of differentiation. Same thing, this tree. I don't want to repeat myself too much. And here we go. So uh, let's say that as first setup, let's say that I want to know that I see, that's why flipping is important. Maybe I can pretend to move this guy a tiny bit to the side and then maybe making it a tiny bit darker and also darken down a bit this side of the building. So now I think that um, now the Z depth is there. So maybe just as adjustment, I want to bring down a bit this side of the image, but just a tiny bit so I can just paint a soft gradient. maybe even using a soft brush. And maybe emphasizing a bit more brights there. Now oh, maybe we don't need it. So for now, more or less, we can keep it like this. What we wanna do now is starting to add the uh, matte painted uh, ground into this image and this is something that will add a lot of realism and um, for example i already see that here of course we need all the shadows of these trees so it's up to us if we want to matte paint them one by one or if we simply want to find a picture that has already um, the feeling of uh, having a lot of uh, shadows of trees on the ground that we can just simply put it in and even if it's not uh, very accurate, even if it's not exactly matching the proper shadows of these trees, uh, but it's only giving the feeling of being uh, inside uh, an environment full of trees with a lot of shadows, it's good anyway because it will just help us to communicate the feeling that we want to give to the picture. So now let's start to prepare the matte painting for the ground. So the first thing that I want to do is to prepare uh, the mask and always using the wire color selecting here we can already uh, create a group for our ground matte painting having this mask which is the mask of the ground. So now we just want to uh, spend the time, most probably a lot of time, <laughs> looking for a picture that will allow us to have uh, the best light condition on our ground uh, as similar as we can to our uh, base raw render 
and I want to show you more or less the, the searching process. So let me show you this folder. This is a folder with the pictures that uh, actually that we made just while walking around or while going to some trip. And it's actually uh, also for you a very nice idea. You know, sometimes we spend a lot of time in looking for pictures on, on the web, which is of course super fine. But remember that if you are around, if you are like walking uh, whatever, and you see some nice ground, some nice shadow or whatever, it's always a nice idea to just take a photo even with your phone if it can uh, do picture with a decent resolution because then you can use these pictures for matte painting and it's always a very nice idea I think. So as you see here I start already to see these pictures with this very nice light, with these very nice tree shadows, and that's exactly the feeling that we wanted to have. But we also have to keep in mind uh, the light situation that we have on our draft here. What we wanna do is to balance and find something that is a bit in between of the feeling that we wanna achieve with the light that we already have in our scene. So for example, if I take this picture, let's see what happens, okay. And let's see what happens when we start to introduce this picture into our ground. So, let's see, because I have to remember that, huh, that's probably pretty cool, uh, that we have exactly this uh, foreground part and this brighter part, and we have to try to stick to this light situation even with our matte painting. So. In this case, for example, I already see that this picture is more or less accurate because we can pretend to have, uh, you see, to align this light part here with the light situation uh, that we have actually in our scene. And this is something that might be useful for us. So let's just try to tweak it a little bit to make it fit. And here we have a lot of shadows of the trees that we can keep more or less. So let's see what happens if we uh, start to regulate it maybe with some curves. So to dark down the foreground and actually bringing up a bit the highlights there. Now everything is becoming a bit too yellowish, too much for me, but tweaking the yellows And this can be something interesting, but well, maybe it's not exactly what we need. So also here, as I already mentioned, it's a pretty long process finding the right picture because we need to be as accurate and as realistic as possible, let's say, with our light situation, especially if I dark down the foreground a bit more. Only the foreground, so I just paint back the adjustment here. It can be something cool. Um, what happens if we use maybe another picture? And also, it's very important to keep the contact shadows here. If you see here, our building was pretty much connected to it, so to the ground. So we can just simply paint them back. So because on the grass, the cool thing is that you can really just use a soft brush to paint because the shadows are never too sharp on this kind of terrain. So we can really just very simply do something like this. I think that is not super bad actually as a draft can be cool. What I don't like are the disposition of some of these trees, especially these two big guys here. Let me see if we can maybe do something better with them. Yeah, these guys. And also this guy, maybe this guy is too bright compared to the roof. We need to make it pop out a bit more. Maybe we don't need it, who knows. Huh. What if we just keep it like this? 
and we just keep these guys and we have maybe this very nice shape of the roof free in contrast with the sky it can be a solution uh, i give you a tip guys uh, when matte painting uh, you especially in the, with this resolution with these drafts you will usually encounter this issue to have this kind of borders let's say where you have the contact between the parts when you have when you are creating the mask especially with the wire color what you can do is simply double clicking on the mask and oh, sorry and uh, enter select and mask and here in the shift edge you can just shift the edge in the direction that you want okay not in this one in the opposite one and you kind of clip you see a bit more the edge of the mask and this is helping you to avoid having this very uh, bad looking let's say uh, borders in the contact parts between the elements so let me uh, see again these elements <laughs> let's see what happens if we just instead of removing the tree put the tree maybe here and popping out a bit more like this and maybe removing entering into the mask and removing manually these white parts let's see maybe we can just keep it behind here it's cool actually behind there i like it it's helping us to reduce the bright spot behind our building for now let's leave with these trees still and uh, they are not convincing me but let's say that later on uh, we can go back to them but so far i think that this picture even for the grass is not super bad uh, what i want to do now is to try some other pictures maybe and see um, how we can improve maybe even more this picture so let's see now how to uh, improve a bit the matte painting in the foreground here and in general on the ground so the first thing that i would like to focus on is to fix this issue that we have where there is some part of the ground that is appearing where there should be just light and to fix this i think that we can simply uh, copy the photo that we are using for the matte painting and maybe just moving it a bit up and in general modify it in order to have on that spot only the light filtering through the light the, the sun filtering through from the trees so something like this and then what we want to do is simply to mask it back and paint it only in the part that we want to have which is here and you see that it's working it's looking a bit better of course we need probably to adjust it a tiny bit in order to um wait let's put it behind the trees exactly and to create a bit of a fade out on that part which is the, the same effect that we wanted to have on the trees but this time on the ground so a very soft gradient here that is helping us to synchronize the terrain with the trees here and with the fade out effect i think something like this is cool more or less for now second what i would like to focus on now is to um, work on a bit more probably on the foreground so once again we can just search for a picture that is suitable for us and in this photo collection also uh, i think we can find something cool some photo especially of uh, maybe some uh, natural ground on the woods and that can help us to give a bit more uh, appeal to our picture so let's search for there is something very cool but they are all with big trees which is our case as well but so far we don't let's try something like this so what if we just simply 
Let's see if I can just go with it or just, okay, open it with Photoshop. And we just bring this picture into our scene. And we're gonna use it just for the foreground. So I'm gonna just create another folder with the same ground mask. And I am gonna modify this picture to make it fit the foreground. So something like this, let's say too much and I'm gonna mask it out and bring it back just in the foreground let's see what happens let's see how it looks like okay so maybe we are a bit overdoing it let's see maybe we need it to be a bit smaller let's see something like this and then we of course have to make it darker, much darker to add some nice detail to our foreground to move it around, see how it looks like The tonalities, I think it's getting a bit too yellowish. It's adding a tiny bit of detail to the foreground. And we need to bring back that adjustment that we made to increase the feeling of contact exactly, something like this. Yeah, just there. And also, we wanna maybe fix a bit the mask here in the contact part because right now you see we have just a straight line but what if we pretend to have a bit of movement of course around here maybe we need to be pretty sharp movement of the terrain so that it doesn't look too flat and fake like a straight line but it looks like it's really intersecting the terrain there and probably the same thing will apply here let's see what happens if we start to do something like this and if we extend this adjustment so something like this I think it will work it's not super precise and I see that for example I need maybe to align and adjust a bit this tree in the foreground because it got a bit too bright now with that foreground it's popping out too much so we can very simply darken it down very brutally and align it with a bit of reddish tone here. No. Oh, something like this, maybe. Yeah. Something like this. Okay. Can be interesting, can be what we need. So now, I also want to do the same on this tree. So, having bit the presence of the terrain here like this and actually I would discuss the necessity of that tree because you see especially when I flip the picture I really like the fact that it's pointing in this direction in this direction and then now we are kind of blocking it with the tree, which can be a choice. Or maybe I just don't like the tree. Let's see if we can find some other tree. Let's try something like this. We have these two special trees. Mm -hmm. Oh, ooh, this can be interesting as well. This can be a nice foreground also. Let's see. It has a very nice light, this tree. Let's see if I just use this one, the one to the left okay, it's a bit intersecting with the other unfortunately but we can live with it or maybe let's just keep both well, why not? why not? I can do this magic trick so let's pretend that we have this very bad mask of the other and we invert coping it the other one so we, uh, we separate basically the two elements 
and we keep this one as a foreground. I think this can be a pretty nice foreground tree, which actually hmm, might be a bit too prominent, maybe. Let's see. Let's let's give him a chance. Let's try to darken it down a little bit again. Dim down a bit. It's pretty cool, but it's too too prominent in my opinion. Let's try to fine-tune also this guy here. Yeah, maybe making it a bit thinner. See, with, the, with the powers that the matte painting is giving us, we can squeeze trees however we want, of course. Of course we have this <laughs> element here. Uh, which is part of the photo, but we can we can we can ignore it for now or we can simply uh, Paint it or With a clone stamping, let's say we can just pretend that it's uh, Oops current and below we can just Bring it out With some clone stamping <laughs> made roughly Something like this. It can be interesting. It can be cool. Let's maybe make it smaller a bit. Yeah. Whatever. We have this part, I know. And uh, we like that tree so much that maybe we can pretend even to crop that pic this picture a tiny bit from the top. And for me it's acceptable. I'm still not sure about the, the other guy there, the tree here. But you know what, let's, let's go with it. Maybe let's remove this branch here. A tiny bit at least. And maybe that's what we need. Maybe the other tree is a bit too yellowish for me. Let's try to balance it a tiny bit. Not too much. And maybe you know what? It's too dark and it's too contrasty that tree. It's a tiny bit too contrasty. Maybe something like this is what we need for now. So you see, we found an alternative for the trees. We found a, a good alternative for the foreground, uh, and slowly our picture is coming together, guys. You see that starting from the base, slowly we are. Uh, working in a good direction. Uh, I think that uh, my goal now would be to uh, do some more fine tuning here and there and then we can start to add also the hazy rainy after rain effect that it's the one the, the basic uh, effect that we wanted to achieve in this picture. So now uh, let's focus on, as we see in the reference, uh, achieving the rainy feeling. Uh, I mean, actually just using uh, a bit of uh, matte rain to achieve the feeling that we wanted to have since the beginning of our image. So having this rainy effect, it's a summatory of, uh, as we said, uh, this Z-depth uh, area perspective feeling that we have already a bit present in the picture and of course uh, this yellowish tone uh, um, rain in, in, in the air. So first thing first I would search for a good uh, matte images uh, for the rain. So to do this especially in drafting uh, let me show you uh, it's pretty easy so you just need to go on Google if you don't already have a, a base setup for uh, uh, matte painted rain and simply if you type uh, uh, rain drops PNG or something like this you will find you see some some images like these some images like these or like these and for drafting these are more than enough 
for achieving the effect that we want to have. So for example, if you go with this one and I maybe just uh, maybe copy image already and paste it in our Photoshop. Yeah, that's everything that we need. So for now, we just put this into a folder and we put it in the screen mode. So in screen, what we are doing is simply to eliminate the, uh, the dark parts to emphasize the bright parts of the picture. So, and of course, we will call this for rain. And of course, by using levels, we can adjust this factor by increasing a bit more the brightness of the bright elements and vice versa to darken down the dark values to make our raindrops more or less visible. And as we see in our picture, of course the raindrops will be visible mainly where the dark parts are because it's completely clear if you observe the transition between this part and this part, here the raindrops are completely visible and clear, but as soon as they are overlapping with a bright part of the picture, they are not visible anymore. So we have to keep this in mind to be realistic and accurate while matte painting and follow the reference. So I already know that the rain will be visible probably in these areas where the trees are, but for sure it won't be <coughs> sorry that visible, actually it won't be visible at all probably where the sky is. So again, I start by simply uh, positioning the raindrops, kind of copying them all over, maybe in some cases scaling them a bit up, a bit down, to cover more or less the area that I want to, where I want to have them. Okay. So now, what I want to do is simply painting them, as we discussed, where I think that they will be visible. So, where the darkest spots are. And it should be not actually that intense because also remember that we had also this reference to have the feeling that we want to achieve. So while this is good also for the colors and stuff, maybe in this case it's too much rain for me. I would uh, make it a tiny bit less uh, evident, a tiny bit less presence, uh, sorry, present in the scene compared to that reference. Maybe we can have it a bit more even in the foreground here. I think it's a good idea tiny bit there. So maybe ah, why not? Let's just use the same folder. Now Maybe a tiny bit smaller. Maybe giving it a bit of yellowish tint will help us to integrate it with the overall light condition. And maybe here it's too visible for me. Something like this. And what if we add like a tiny bit of a sort of particles up in the air to simulate this very soft uh, glowy drops? Maybe we can try something like this. Let's see how it looks like. Always I would say in screen mode. Yeah, and we have this kind of uh, kind of wet lens effect with these small things popping out that I think is really doing good to achieve this kind of wettish feeling in the air and most probably what we want also to emphasize a bit more the 
overall glow and maybe tiny a bit more overall tone. So a good trick, let's say, to act on the overall tonality of the image is to using right now. So right now I'm kind of stopping from uh, working on the individual elements in the composition and I'm trying to work in the overall picture. So right now uh, what we want to do is probably to uh, having with this U saturation uh, we put it into colorize and you see that all the images are uh, aligning to a specific tonality that we can pick from the U selector and we want to make it a bit more like on the yellowish tones, warm tones and if we put it into soft light we are using this to create a sort of contrast of that tone in the picture and the more saturation and the more brightness we give it the more it will achieve a specific level of tonality in this sense and by using the opacity of this adjustment we can decide how intense this final adjustment should be so you see now how from before right now everything got much warmer and of the same tonality maybe even too much for me maybe i would soften it down a tiny bit and now we will add a bit more of glow to the scene now that we are happy with this contrast uh, and color balance thing uh, maybe now that i see actually we can even dark down a bit the architecture itself here in the foreground and we can maybe do it uh, just by maybe we already have the mask that we need because previously when positioning our trees yeah we created this mask so we can select the same mask and copy it as adjustment here and just maybe oops of course i have to make it white i have to invert it dark down a tiny bit this architecture here especially yeah in this way yeah it works pretty nicely maybe i would just get it away from here and keep it in this part and maybe here it was good anyway cool and now i want to add a bit of glow in the air because if you see here and especially here and uh, but also yeah actually also here you see how we have this kind of soft uh, rays of light trapped in the air and uh, let's say in the in the raindrops and i would like to try to to create something similar also here and to do it very simply we can just uh, with our brush select the color of the sky here and maybe very softly uh, with the yeah, pen of flow we can very softly paint a bit of soft rays like this that will help us to have this soft glow that is the effect that we wanted to achieve okay like this and i think this is exactly what we need you see we painted it where the light is coming from and this is very helpful for us and maybe we can pretend to have it softly even a bit here even of course to tone down a bit some dark spots and now i think we are ready uh, what we need now of course is a character uh, and as we mentioned already in the beginning of this drafting session we wanted to put the character here because here you see we are in the focus of this picture it is the brightest point here in the composition is in the center and a character should be positioned in this way so let's start to look for a character and the principles are the same so we need to find a character that has already almost the perfect light situation that we want to have and i will show you this is the collection of people that we are using since it's a school we can add kids let's try to find a kid with already this kind of sort of backlit uh, light situation and here we are so this is the asinon page 
It's a very, very nice website for cutout characters. I strongly recommend it because, first of all, uh, it offers a really huge variety. And second, because the cataloging system is pretty efficient. So they're uh, subdivided by activity, by <clears throat> kind of pe or person, it's a family, teenager, senior, kids, group, pair, the viewpoint, the season, the light, the clothing, the color palette is pretty efficient. So we want to look for kids. So I already uh, choose this uh, search filter, looking for a, a kid cutout character with a proper light situation. Starting to look and maybe with a nice position that also makes sense to us. So, and after a long search, I think it makes sense to choose these characters and we will copy them into our people folder. So if you see these characters, you see that actually, I don't know why I missed them before because they're pretty good. The light is exactly the light that we wanna have because they will be standing here and they will have the light coming a bit from the side of them. They will be pretty bright and this is what we need. So the story can be something like, you know, this girl helping the kid. So the rain is done and they're ready to play or something like this. And yeah, we have to check the size, should be correct. Uh, it's always good guys remember if you're not sure about the size to double check it in the max file maybe with a dummy so you put a, a box which is the same size of a person and you see but since these are steps should be more or less accurate and now we just want to fine-tune them a little bit so we just want to probably contrast them a tiny bit more but not even that much because maybe even even brighten them up a tiny bit and removing these cold tonalities that they have so these cyan's yeah these blues and make them a bit warmer overall yeah so they are fitting on our picture and maybe yeah honestly i would still darken them down a tiny bit just a bit, just like this. Then we can, of course, paint some shadows on them. To do it, we, in this case, it's not gonna be that visible, so we just need to pick the tonality of the shadows that we already have in the scene, and with a hard brush, simply paint them over, like so, following, of course, the logic of the steps which is present in the scene especially here and maybe yeah something like that something like this and more or less we have the effect that we want to achieve So, now that we are kind of ready, probably not the best shadow that I've ever painted in my life, but still acceptable. Maybe I would darken down a bit the, some parts of these cut out, like a bit of pants and shoes, stuff like that. Let's see how it looks like, but in general, I think that is okay. She's acceptable. And guys, I would say that for now, this can be our draft. I would say that as a draft, considering where we started, let me quickly show you once again the row render, which was this one. Considering that we started from here, achieving something like this for a draft for us is more than enough and it's exactly what we aim for so with this image we want to communicate to the client a concept that is very precise in terms of light situation and in terms of mood that we want to have in the picture and that's it guys so i really hope that you enjoyed it 
and I really hope that I was able to communicate you and to show you something new, something interesting. And yeah, my goal was to show you our approach that, uh, that we are using here in Brick to create a draft and to communicate you, uh, especially, uh, let's say, more than a, um, than a procedure, uh, a mindset, a mentality, the mentality that we use when we start to first sketch and approach a new picture. So that's it. Uh, please uh, remember to book your place uh, at the post-production masterclass and always remember to wear your mask. <laughs>